AMD is a stock that I've seen absolutely tremendous growth in the last year. And that is also due to the semiconductor chip shortages we've got going at the moment. But just like Nvidia, we need to chat about that valuation. So in this video, I will do a stock analysis on AMD to help you determine what a fair price is if you want to invest in the stock. And then I'll also compare it with Nvidia at the end of this video to see which one is the better stock. So let's start off by looking at the stock price first. Now in the last five Days, you will see AMD is up 2.93% and if we zoom out to the last year you will see absolutely tremendous growth in the last few months and it's up 74.7% moving out to the last five years you will see that this stock have performed absolutely amazing sitting at 1798% just in five years alone as you can see most of the growth coming from the last few months though so now that we've looked at the stock, let's go check out the business and let's start off by looking at the revenue first and see where they are generating most of the revenue from. So looking at the revenue for AMD, you will see that 57.6% coming from the computing and graphic side. And then the enterprise embedded and semi custom side sitting at 41.3%. And then they also have a lot of cash on their balance sheets at the moment, sitting at 2% of that market cap. So this company is just absolutely printing money at the moment. And you will see why just a little bit later in this video. So now let's head over to the stock overview and check out the overview of this stock. Now, as you can see, this stock is trading under the ticker, obviously AMD. They've got a market cap of 195.5 billion US dollars. Now the price of this stock 10 years ago was sitting at $5.54. And today this stock is trading at $161.91. So had you invested in AMD, 10 years ago, you would have done exceptionally well. Full disclosure, I actually did invest in AMD about five years ago. And just like Nvidia, I sold a little bit too early. However, like I said, I still doubled my money and I have no regrets because, well, you just cannot time the market. So now looking at the PE ratio, this PE ratio is pretty high at the moment, sitting at 47.75. So as you can see, there is definitely a lot of sentiment driving the stock price at the moment. And that we can see throughout all the semiconductor stocks at the moment as well. Looking at the net margins, very good net margins, sitting at 26.72%. Then looking at the equity, sitting at 5.8 billion. And the equity to market cap, not that high though, sitting at only 2.9%. So our benchmark is generally 10 now AMD doesn't pay a dividend at the moment, but they do generate cash flows of 2.9 billion. So as you can see, they are generating a lot of free cash flow. So they've got a lot of cash flow left in order to either pay dividends or just grow the business or return it back to shareholders. So now let's head over to some of the key ratios of the stock. First, we are going to look at the debt to equity ratio. Now with a debt to equity ratio, I generally like to have a debt to equity ratio of 40% or less when I look at these companies. However, looking at AMD, it is sitting at only 4.4%. So they have very, very little debt compared to the equity within the company. The free cash flow to debt sitting at a massive 95%. Price to sales, as you can see, very high, sitting at 12.76. You will definitely be paying a premium for a company growing the way AMD does. The price to book sitting at 26.2. The five-year beta sitting at 2.01. The total shares held by the insiders sitting at only 0.42%. And the total shares held by the institutions sitting at 70.42%. Now the total shares that are shorted at the moment, outstanding, sitting at 6.25%, so not that much. The short ratio sitting at 1.23. So then I like to look at the return on equity. And the reason I look at the return on equity to see the management's ability to grow the equity within the company. It's generally a good sign of growth within the company. And my benchmark is 10%. Looking at AMD, this is just absolutely incredible, sitting at 72.14%. So management is definitely doing a great job in terms of the return on equity. Looking at the return on assets, also doing a very good job, sitting at 20.93. And then looking at the return on invested capital, I also love looking at this ratio because this tells me how the management is investing the capital for the company. Once again, I've got that benchmark of 10%. In this case, they are sitting with a return on invested capital of 73.21%. Just absolutely incredible. 
So then I like to look at the current ratio and the reason I look at the current ratio is to see if the company has got more current assets than current liabilities. So for this to happen, the current ratio needs to be one or greater than one. They are very well capitalized at the moment, sitting at 2.24 for the current ratio. Then have a look at these growth rates. This is for the last three years, the compounded annual growth rate. This is just absolutely mind boggling. Sitting at 23% compounded annual growth for the revenue. 212% for the operating cash flows, 120% compounded annual growth for the free cash flow, and 78.52% for the earnings per share. That is just absolutely incredible growth rates. Which now takes us over to the year-on-year -year data. Let's go check what has been happening in the financials. Looking at the financials, the first thing we are looking at is the shares outstanding. Now, as you can see, they have been diluting shareholders slightly. However, it's definitely not an awful lot. But still, there is some shareholder dilution going on. I'm not sure exactly why. I suppose it's most probably because of the high stock price and they are making the most of the high stock price at the moment to raise some capital within the company. Looking at the assets though, up from 4 billion to 8 billion. The assets are definitely more than the liabilities. 8.9 billion versus 3.1 billion. The equity is up 1.2 billion to 5.8 billion. Have a look at the revenue. Revenue have more than doubled. 6.4 billion to 14.8 billion. With the revenue, the gross profit, the operating income, the net income, the operating cash flows, and the free cash flows, you have been seeing a lot of momentum. As you can see, it has been going up year on year. So this is absolutely incredible numbers. It's exactly what you want to see when you want to invest in a stock. Just have a look at the net income up from 337 million all the way up to 3.9 billion in the trailing 12 months. Free cash flow going from negative, actually negative 129 million, all the way up to 2.9 billion. This is just absolutely phenomenal. Then looking at the earnings per share as well, going from 0.32 all the way up to 3.25. So as you can see by looking at these numbers, it looks very, very good. And we saw exactly the same thing with Nvidia as well. However, I would argue that AMD might look a little bit better than that. However, now we are going to look at our 18 point checklist. We are going to take all of the data we just looked at and then score it down in the 18 point checklist, which is divided up into three different segments, the fundamentals, the momentum, and then the growth as well. So looking at the 18 point checklist, the PE ratio, unfortunately not between one and 25, net margins greater than 10%, the assets are greater than the liabilities, the dividend cost is less than the free cash flow because they are not paying a dividend, so automatically it is less than the free cash flow. The debt to equity ratio is less than 40%, the current ratio greater than one, and unfortunately shareholders have slightly been diluted in the last three years. So unfortunately they didn't get a point for that. However, look at the momentum questions. For the revenue, the gross profit, the operating income, the net income, the operating cash flow, and the free cash flows, they have been growing year on year. So absolutely incredible for the momentum side. Looking at the growth, we see exactly the same thing. The share price have way more than doubled in the last 10 years. Return on equity greater than 10%, return on assets greater than 10%, the return on invested capital also greater than 10%, and the earnings per share have been growing by a compounded annual growth rate of more than 10% over the last three years. So as you can see, it is looking really, really good for AMD. Which now takes us to our valuations. Of We are now going to look at the valuations and see what a fair price is if we wanna invest in the stock. Now, if you want to have access to our templates, and by the way, it's a free template that you can use in order to work out your own valuations, you can head over to our website. We can get access to all of our courses absolutely free of charge, and you will also get access to our free spreadsheet where you can do your own valuations on the company because you might not agree with some of the numbers I put down in my projections. So anyway, let's have a look at the free cash flow first. So you will see that currently the price to free cash flow is sitting at 65.97. So that is extremely high and I feel a little bit uncomfortable paying that for a stock, which is also why I don't own the stock anymore. But then I took three different scenarios, a low multiple, a median multiple, and then a high multiple. And I used 40 for the low, 45 for the median, and then 50 for the high. Now, to be quite honest with you, this already is a lot more than what I'm willing to pay. But looking at Nvidia and looking at AMD, this is basically the average price to free cash flows that these two stocks have been doing in the last three years or so. So for that reason, I used these multiples. But that will give you a low price of $97, a median price of $110, and a high price of $122, which means that it's an average price of $110 
on the free cash flows which now moves us on to the earnings per share let's have a look at the valuation on the earnings per share if we use that metric so looking at the earnings per share the discount rate is 10 percent that's the return on investment i like to see on my money but then i took three different cases as well a bear case a median case and then a bull case so this is basically what the analysts predict this company will do however i do know that the analysts are sometimes very optimistic so i was a little bit more conservative with my numbers but i took a bear case of 12 percent a median case of 16 percent and then a bull case of 20 percent and then I also have a fair target PE ratio of what I am willing to pay for a company like this, which is sitting at around 30. Now, as you can see, NVIDIA and AMD, all of these semiconductor companies are going on valuations a lot higher than this. However, you need to understand that this is also a cyclical industry. So for that reason, I like to be a little bit more conservative. However, even 30 is a little bit high already. But anyway, that will give me a bear case of $111, a median case of $126, and then a bull case of $143 which means it's an average case of $127. Now, if we move back to the stock, let's see when last did it actually trade for that valuation. As you can see, not too long ago, it have actually been doing that in the last few months. So as you can see, it is not impossible. This stock could easily go back to those numbers once again. So for that reason, I think that this stock is definitely a little bit overvalued at the moment. Let's have a look at my verdict. As you can see, the fundamentals looking really good, sitting at 71%, momentum excellent, 100%, and the growth also excellent, 100%. So the analyst 12-month target for this stock is $140.50. And if we move to the analyst projections here, you will see that they are bullish on the stock, rating at 3.8 out of 5, 14 being very bullish, 6 being bullish, and then 16 being neutral, 1 being bearish, and 1 being very bearish. And then if you look at the 12 month target, you will see that they are predicting an average case of $140, a high case of $180, and then a low case of $80. Moving back to my verdict, you will see my price projection or my fair price today is sitting at $126.64. And like I said, even paying those numbers, the numbers that I put down in my valuation model is already actually a little bit too high for me. So I already actually feel uncomfortable. I feel to me, this is actually a bull case. But anyway, this will give me a potential loss of $35.27 or a projected net margin of negative 21.78%. So at the moment, I feel that AMD is a sell. Now, like I said, I actually did have AMD and Nvidia in my portfolio at one stage. I doubled my money on both of them and then I sold the stocks. I could have done a lot more had I kept it, but I did feel that it was the right thing to do at the time. So now let's have a look at AMD and then look at Nvidia as well. So this is the verdict for AMD, 71% on the fundamentals, 100 on the growth, and then 100 on the momentum as well. Looking at Nvidia, Nvidia actually only did 57 on the fundamentals, 33 on the momentum, and 100% for the growth. And for the net margin, I had a negative 57.9%. For AMD, I have a net margin of negative 21.78%. So even though both of them are actually overvalued at the moment, according to me, I think that AMD is most probably the better buy if you want to invest in one of them. So if you want to see stocks that we feel are undervalued at the moment, simply click on the link coming up in this video right now.